Good morning, Dave Kenworthy here again. Um, 20th of the 10th, 2021. And we're um, looking at 56 postals around the uh, Stonehenge Aubrey Circle today. And um, first of all, I'm going to show you two examples of how these um, 56 postals have been studied. And this book is by Douglas C. Heggie. And it's called Megalithic Science, Ancient Mathematics and Astronomy in Northwest Europe. And he's looking at the work of two very famous professors here. Professor Hawkins. And he was suggesting that you can predict eclipses using 56 markers in a circle. And also Professor Sir Fred Hoyle on the right hand side, who was the Royal Astronomer. Very famous man. Um, he was showing a very simple method by using three markers of how you could predict eclipses. And the markers revolve at approximately their real rates. So that's something really special. So my question to metrologists is, why aren't you looking for the um, metrology of the eclipse? Because that's all I've been looking for ever since I started doing this work. Because that's what Tom tells us they were doing. And they were predicting eclipses in Egypt. And they were predicting eclipses on Salisbury Plain. And they were predicting eclipses at Karnak in Egypt and in France. So um, we should be looking all the time for eclipse prediction methods. And um, that's that book. And now I'll get Sir Fred Hoyle's book because this is really interesting what he says. I mean, this is the book to read to really understand what's going on at Stonehenge. And on page 100 at the top where I've identified it in yellow, he says, it follows that 6585.3 days after an eclipse, there will be another eclipse of the same kind. And he's using 56 postals to prove it. And he's also saying they weren't looking at eclipses of the sun. They were looking at eclipses of the moon, which are very common. And they knew in advance when these eclipses were going to take place because eventually, in a period of less than 100 years, they, they discovered this 6585.333 days. And if we add 14.666 to that, we get 6600. And this is something that they knew. And he said they, they knew 25.53 or 6, which they did. But when they worked it out at 6585.3, they realised if they divided that by 449, they got this unit of 14.666. But he was saying they were using 223 times 29.53 or 6, which is correct. But if you divide 29.53 or 6 by 224.5 and then multiply it by 223, you get 29.333 exactly. And that's what they did. They really smoothed it out and made it very simple. And if we um, divide 5280 by 360, we get this, we get this eclipse unit of 14.666. And this unit um, is hidden. And they're all hidden, these units. You have to dig them out. And we're going to look at route 2 now, which is hidden in the perimeter of the Aubrey Circle using this 56, number 56, we can find it very easily. So that's what we're going to do. Now I just want to look at <clears throat> my book that I've written about the work of Harrison Stockdale, because this is crucial, because when I, when I did the research for this book, this is chapter one, so if I just click there, Stonehenge proving the megalithic foot. I'm, I'm inside the book on Amazon now because I've got, bought a copy so I can open it and read it. If we go back to the start of chapter one. Chapter one, understanding root two. In a perfect square of side one unit, the square root, root of two is the diagonal. So it will appear naturally in a perfectly drawn square as 1.4142135622, possibly an irrational number not capable of being translated into a fraction. The HSMF is 14.142, so immediately 
It is 0.9999041 of actual route 2. Um, and when I went through um, using my spreadsheet to test the mathematics involved in this unit that Peter Harris and Norman Stockdale had discovered, I discovered all these other units that were appearing, like 1.1, 10 over 9, and um, 100 over 99. They were all working in the, in the designs, and 40 over 9 for a full circle, um, which is 4.444. And um, I discovered that they were using approximations of root 2, and the Harrison Stockdale route two fell between the approximations. Not exactly, but it definitely fell between them. And these are the two approximations, 140 over 99 and 99 over 70. So you can imagine my excitement when I got Berryman's book about um, historical metrology. And he's saying that the Egyptians were using 140 over 99 and 99 over 7. And... um. To say that I was um, stunned by this was an understatement. And also what I found was this relationship between the two versions of pi that they were using to get this number, 9.8765432.1. They were using 9800 and 9801. And the second version of pi is 22 over 7 times 9800 divided by 9801. And the version of pi that can be used as a diameter is 22 over 7 plus the version of pi that's produced using this, added together and divided by 2. And then what you find is that version of pi works exactly with root 2, the best approximation you can get from the uh, from the spreadsheet, the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that I use. If we divide, if we take the square root of that and divide it by root 2, we get these um, numbers that are... F- 4.444 exactly recurring and 2.222 recurring. And this is what they knew. And this is what Berryman tells us they knew. And um, if I go to the end of this chapter, my, this is my conclusion. This is the version of pi. Now, it can be produced fractionally, this version, but I didn't do it and I wasn't aware of it. And I wasn't aware that that's 800 over 81. But that's my first chapter discussing the Harrison Stockdale megalithic foot. And there's absolutely no doubt that Harrison Stockdale's measure is valid. And they're trying, well, P- Peter Harris is trying desperately to prove it. But for some reason, he's just not referring to my work, even though he knows it's there. And I, I can't understand why, but I know that I must have done something to really upset him. And whatever it is, I apologise for it unreservedly. But anyway, it's there. And um, we're going to go now to the presentation. Uh, Stonehenge proving the Aubrey Circle 56 post holes as 10 root 2. Also proving pi squared as a circumference 800 over 81 or 9.87654321 and that's Berry Moon. And what I'm saying is this is something we can actually do because of Tom's 330 megalithic yard measure. So we know there are 56 units in the Aubrey Circle. That's absolutely certain. And the ancient designers are presenting presenting pi times diameter equals 10 root 2. So the squared circle, because we're using 10 root 2, we're squaring the circle. 10 root 2 is the same as pi times diameters, that's the circle. And the pi is 22 over 7, which is that. And the diameter is 9 over 2, 4.5. And 10 root 2 is 198 over 14, which is 14.142857. And 10 root 2 is the same thing. 10 over 1 multiplied by 99 over 7 is 1.4142857 and 10 root 2 is 990 over 70 which is the same as that and it's 14.142857 that's what they're proving but they're not doing it like that at the Aubrey Circle it's expanded the design is expanded at the Aubrey Circle so how does it apply at the Aubrey Circle we take 10 units between each post hole so we've got 560 units 
and then we expand the perimeter which is in megalithic yards 330 megalithic yards take half the megalithic yard which is 1.36 imperial feet that gives 660 units then multiply it by 12 and we find we're using a, a unit of 1.36 inches and we get 7920 units divided by 560 and we get 14.142857 it's dead easy and and it's obviously the reason why they were putting 560 into a perimeter because 560 is 8 times 7 times 10 um and 8 times 7 suggests they're using periods of 8 8 units and actually at Stonehenge they we know they're using periods of 8 years so we've got 792 over 560 and we divide by 8 we get 99 over 7 and there it is 14.142857 and Peter Harris and Norman Stockdale's unit is multiplied by 16499 times 16540 oh. <laughs> oh I got it the wrong way around and there it is one 14.142, apologies for that um, few mess ups there. So what has happened? The designers have placed the 56 marker, markers so that when the circumference is known, 10 root 2 becomes apparent, as was their intention. Now Tom has given us the measure. He didn't know about this. He had no idea. He's just worked out 330 megalithic yards. And... Um, and we have to look at the duality of the design because there's more than one unit of measure being used in this design. So in imperial inches, the unit of conversion is 1.36 inches. And the circle is 897.6 feet, the Aubrey circle, which is 1071.2. <clears throat> imperial inches we divide that by 1.36 we get 792 divided by 560 we get 10 root 2 but we, if we can divide that by 0.816 we get 13200 in uh, megalithic inches in the perimeter and if we divide that by 0.8816 we get 1.66666 megalithic inches Divided into that gives 7920. So we can see how smooth the calculation is when we use megalithic inches. We've got this clunky unit here in imperial inches and this beautifully smooth unit here. And that's, um, it's 100 times 11 times 12, this unit. And it represents the circumference of the Earth and the great circle of 25,000 miles. Now, interestingly, um, I can, oops, sorry. We can also show that 897.6 feet in megalithic units is 330 megalithic yards, 132 megalithic rods, and Tom tells us 100 megalithic inches in a megalithic rod, and it's there. So I'm saying 56 pole stalls told us a great deal, but when Tom worked out the perimeter, the true reasons why 56 was used were mathematical and geometric, as Tom suggested, and now we can see that. The circle and the square, using ancient knowledge from Berryman. And what we know is, when the perimeter of the circle is 56, or 560 as we're using here, the inscribed square is nine-tenths of it, which is 504, and the side is a quarter of it. The inscribed square side is 126. We also know that there's a suggestion that the Egyptian foot is 12.6 inches. And to get the radius, use root 2 as 140 over 99. <clears throat> we get the radius as 89.1, and the diameter is times 2. We get 178.2, and pi is that divided by that, which is that. 
And it's this version of pi that I've just been explaining to you, which is 22 over 7 divided by 9801 and multiplied by 9800, and it's that. And um, the version of pi that we can use as a diameter and square to get 800 over 81 is this one here. Um, and it's 3.1426968. It's the square root of 9.87654321, which is that times that. So the ancients knew all this, and the fantastic calculation is when we divide this by root 2, we get that. And when we multiply it by root 2, we get that. So these two un these these figures are showing exactly what the ancients knew. And it's all in decimal, but it can all be worked out in, 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 uh, in, in fractional notation. But it's very difficult to show it as simply as this using fractional notation. So now we go on to this version of root 2. And there it is, root 2. Multi divide it by 27 and we get into Giza spheres. That's the Giza sphere and I've written a presentation about the Giza sphere. And if we divide it by 27 and multiply it by 28, we get the eclipse unit. And that's 28 Giza spheres. And why is the megalithic yard working with root 2? We have to go down here to find out. The side of the square is 10 megalithic inches and the perimeter is 40 megalithic inches. And <clears throat> we've got the unit being used is 99 over 84, which is 1.178571, multiplied by 136 over 100, which is um, 1.36 inches. We multiply that by that and we get this. And it's 13464 divided by 8400. <clears throat> and when we divide that into 897.6, we get 560. And that's what I've used for proving the megalithic foot. So this, this is all stacking up to Berryman's historical metrology, as, as I found when I bought his book. My book about the uh, Harrison Stockdale megalithic foot contains the same calculations as Berryman. And this 13464, if we divide that, we get 4950 megalithic yards. And divide it by 1.36, we get 9900. And if we divide it by 897.6, we get 15 Aubrey circles. Now this 13464 is the distance between the western end of the Greater Cursus and the uh, Woodhenge circle. Um, and we're going to the centre of Woodhenge. And... The distance between the western end of the cursus and the dividing line that runs between Stonehenge and Avebury is 3960 feet. So if we take from that, that we get 9504 feet and and that is the length of the uh, 12 side of the lunation triangle that I've discovered at Stonehenge. And if we divide that by 12, we get 792. And absolutely everything stacks up now. There's no gaps at all in this analysis. And it's working on the ground at Stonehenge. And it's worth in working mathematically as well when we go through the mathematical theory using Berryman's ancient analysis of the different versions of root 2 as 99 over 70 and 140 over 99. 
and it gets much more complex than this. So I'll stop now.